Welcome everybody to another video. Today I want to show you one of my winter projects because I'm disassembling my Trabant 601 right now. So this is how my Trabant currently looks like. I already started disassembling stuff. Inside it's almost pretty empty and I want to show you how such a Trabant looks inside. So you can see this is the connection of the, of the dampers and you even have a bar in between. So something which is a tuning part at other, part at other cars but here it comes standard from the factory because also the body isn't um, super strong. It's such a Trabant. Then we have um, this little bump in here. This is actually for the spare wheel. And the spare wheel is then fixed here at the top with a strap which goes through this little brake. And the rear lights are yeah, pretty simple. You just have a couple of cables here. Very easy to disassemble. Nothing big. And then one of the things I wanted to show you is that um, this part, as we know from my previous videos, is metal, so this is steel. That's why we have rust everywhere around here and also around the window frame. So I will remove the windows, um, take them out and bring the car to the paint shop so they can uh, properly fix these areas and repaint the whole car. Um, this is actually quite an interesting part because that is the air exit of the interior. Usually you have these um, grills on top of here and if you take a look inside here you can see actually the roof line of the car. So if you look at this here you can see that the air is going um, over this edge and then out through this air exit. And this is pretty much how all the older cars um, extracted air from the interior. Because if you want to blow air inside the cabin, you also need to release it somewhere. Today's cars have it somewhere in the back of the trunk, so somewhere in, in this area. So we also have a flow through the trunk. Older cars didn't really have that. Um, then I still need to disassemble the uh, dashboard. Um, but it's usually not a big thing. Uh, there's not so much stuff inside there. And let's have a look at the engine bay because the engine bay is partly disassembled now. So I removed all the air cooling ducts and all, this, uh, all these pipes in here. So what you can see pretty nicely here is now the cylinders, um, cylinder one and two. You have the two ignition um, coils. You have the big fan here, which is driven by the crankshaft by this belt. You have the uh, exhaust primary here and this is how the air is flowing through here and then the hot air is coming out here and um, we have another path for the hot air and this is directly from this fan into the uh, first muffler. Then the air flows around the muffler, comes out here and here at the top at this box uh, this is where the hot air from the muffler and the hot air from the exhaust primary arrives and this is where we can choose if we want to have the hot air here from the top or the cold air here from the bottom which is the straight pipe which goes to the air intake at the front so something we covered at my last video and inside here inside this box you have a few flaps and levers I'm not sure if you can see it in here okay so now I got some better light so you can see the flap inside here this is what you move with the levers inside the cockpit so you can open and close this um, duct for the hot air and you can open and close this duct here for the cold air. You can see the other flap in there. The gearbox itself, if we look at this, looks pretty much like a modern gearbox of a car with transversely mounted engine. We have traditionally the engine on the passenger side, so on the right hand side of the car. And the gearbox here on the driver's side, so on the left hand side of the car. Uh, this is still the same arrangement we have today in modern cars like a VW Golf and all the others. And we have the differential right behind it. We can see it right here. And um, it looks like a pretty modern design given that this is a 1950s design. It's, it looks pretty modern. Um, we have the starter right here. We have our um, washer fluid here, the batteries right in front of here. We know that the fuel tank is here already. Uh, now you can also see the fuel lines a little bit better, what I did here. So I used the latest um, or the best model you can use for the stopcock because I had massive problems with that. So we have an aluminium um, 
uh, water sack underneath, water bag. And um, that's actually a refurbished original East German um, stopcock for the fuel because all the others that I had before were leaking. This one is perfect now. So let's talk a little bit about the engine um, because there were massive problems with this engine before. So when I bought the car, you could only drive like 10 or 20 kilometers and then suddenly one cylinder would shut down. And as you can see here, the cylinders are pretty wet. Um, I then found out that the previous owner um, installed the wrong ignition coils and the wrong spark plugs. So that didn't work. So they didn't really clean themselves while driving. They didn't really reach operating temperature. And that's why um, one ignition or one spark plug gave up first and then this cylinder was down. Of course, it sounded bad. It was smoking a lot and stuff. So I changed to the original setup, which was fine. And then it was running well. But I always had a pretty hard exhaust note from the front. And I also um, had some strange noises while driving. First, not so much and then got even worse. Now I removed everything and I want to show you a picture or I want to show you a video of what really happened underneath the cover here. So the thing was, I fixed the ignition, I fixed the fuel system, I fixed also the carburetor. The carburetor was a regenerated one, but then I found out it wasn't regenerated very well because they forgot some, um, some seals, um, some of the settings were wrong or some of the uh, screws that should like fix the setup of this uh, carburetor were not really fixed. So they could turn while driving just because of vibrations and it was just... Um, not working very well. So in the end, I fixed all of that. So the engine was running well. It always started at, under every condition and um, the car was, was running well, but it always had some strange noises. And um, I could then now see, as you could see just in the video, that um, the exhaust primaries um, were leaking and also the head gasket were leaking. So I then checked the torque so how they torqued these screws. And I found out that they didn't really torque these screws. So you see, you have these four screws here for the um, cylinder heads and they really were not really torqued. So they need 41 Newton meters and they had less than 20. And that was the reason why this one cylinder here was leaking as you could just see in the video. Now it doesn't leak anymore. And then also the second exhaust primary. So this one here also wasn't really torqued very well. So um, I torqued this one and you could actually see in the video that the seal is just flapping around. So let's have a look at this. So now I fixed also that. I torqued everything to where it should be. And now, um, the engine is running better, but still because of all that leaking, the seals are blown and I will remove all these seals and replace them with brand new ones. So one quick thing I want to show you is how you replace the windows at the Trabant because all these windows are not uh, glued in. You basically just have a seal that is sitting on this metal piece here. So it's quite a funny way. I'm using a cable here for it and you push this cable underneath that rubber and then you basically push the windscreen out and it's the same for all the other windows so a very simple and easy way so after i put the cable in and a lot of wd-40 around every edge i was simply pushing the windscreen out and you can see that it was coming out here now and now i can just take it out so that is one of my winter projects what i'm doing right now the car will go to the paint shop in the next couple of days and after that I will move on to the next project for this winter while the car is in the paint shop so when it comes back I can assemble everything. So looking forward to see you at the next video and see you soon. Bye!